so I'm out here in this little patch in my garden which doesn't look very much probably but it's actually one of my favourite spots in the garden. Now the reason for that is because it has quite a few wildflowers here and the reason for that is because where we are it's very very chalky we're on a slope here so we've got very shallow soils free draining with very few nutrients and that's the key really for the wildflowers they can cope with those conditions whereas the more aggressive species that we might not want the sort of um, more kind of robust grasses thistles docks those sort of things can't cope with those conditions so these lovely wildflowers have got that competitive edge. They can survive quite happily here without, with very little competition. So we've got a few different species to have a quick look at here now. We have a couple of members of the pea family, which I'm just going to talk about. And those are this common bird's foot trefoil that you can see down here. And this very small yellowed plant, yellow flowered plant, the black medic. So the pea family, quite an interesting family of plants. So the flowers of the pea family are all arranged in exactly the same way. So if you have a close look at them, on this bird's foot trefoil you can see that there are five petals all arranged in this particular way. We've got this large petal at the top here known as the standard and then we've got two wings on the side and then there's a keel at the base like a keel of a boat which is two parts two keel petals and this provides a perfect landing platform for the insects that will pollinate these flowers now if you look at any member of the pea family you'll find that all of the flowers are arranged in this particular way so if we have a look even at this tiny black medic flower now if you look at this flower head if you look very, very closely, you'll see that it's made up <coughs> of lots of tiny, tiny flowers, florets. And if you tease those apart, each one of those tiny florets will have those five petals arranged in the exact same way as this bird's foot trefoil, just in miniature. And that will be the same on the clovers, if you have a look at the clovers as well. So other plants in this family would include gorse and broom. So if you have a look at those flowers, they'll all be arranged in that same way. That's a really interesting family of plants because they are very good at fixing nitrogen from the atmosphere. So they've got this symbiotic relationship with bacteria, which means that they both benefit each other. And the bacteria can fix nitrogen from the atmosphere and make it turn it into a, a usable form for the plants so they can cope on very infertile soils so hence this area here which doesn't have much fertility we have at least two members of the pea family now the leaves are we call them trifoliate which means they are in three parts three leaflets and on the black medic a distinguishing feature is that at the end of each leaflet there's a tiny tiny tip it looks a bit like a hair sticking out we call that a mucronate tip and that helps us to distinguish this from some similar plants like hop trefoil so we've got the black medic here common bird's foot trefoil and the other interesting thing about the common bird's foot trefoil is that its leaves are the food plant for several different butterfly species so common blue for example and the green hair streak they will both lay their eggs on this plant and the caterpillars will feed on this plant so that's really really nice so we've got those two members of the pea family here and there are some others which we will talk about soon as well <laughs> 